All right, guys. Hey, and welcome back to the Blue Podcast. Today, you are joined by me and Henry as your hosts, yeah. as per usual lately. Um, Ruse Ru- dips in and out, but uh, yeah, kind of. It's me and you. It's me and you. As I keep saying, the dream team. So yeah, and uh, today we are joined by Coach Raffers. How you doing, mate? Thank you for having me on. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm enjoying the hot weather. Yep. Yeah. And. As I said to you earlier, it's better than England's performance last night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, for context, this has just been re- this is being recorded the day after the Slovenia game. Yes, where we did manage to top our group. How many goals were actually scored in that? It was like two, four. Two. There was a two goals overall in the whole group. Oh no, no, no. it was um, four. Really? I think. No, it's more than that. Slovenia didn't score. No, Slovenia scored once, didn't they? Yeah, they scored one. Yeah, and then Denmark got two. I thought. No, did Denmark the, the, drew all their games? Yeah, Denmark, Denmark got one. They they drew nil nil one one nil nil. Oh, gosh, so that's one goal. England yeah. scored two. That's England scored three. two, and then because we were the only team to win, I think you're win. right. Four, five. Guys. Serbians. Yeah. <laughs> the Serbia scored the two. worst group probably in Euro's history. I'm sorry. It is based on like, based on goal difference. It, it's yeah, the worst it's, group in Euro's history. it's ridiculous. I, I, that's why I think I think Denmark went through second purely on their name starting with D. I believe <laughs> because because I looked at all this every stat and it's. It's same identical. goals, same goals conceded, same goals scored against each other because obviously it was zero. Head to head. But then it would be shots on target or something. It must be yeah. something. <laughs> it must like or, that's or yellow cards. Maybe, maybe it's yellow, yellow cards. cards. Yeah. Maybe it's yellow cards. But <laughs> even then, but, I th- but it's, just, it's just like <laughs> how dull of a group can that be? Yeah, it's, it's actually uh, mental. But hopefully, round of sixteen for England will be more interesting. Well, yes. it will be probably. Well, <laughs> this is this is where I'm excited because it's actually a great draw. I don't know if you've been keeping up with how teams well, are kind of shaping. Yeah. Well, it's well, it's not. Isn't that if if the Czech Republic or whoever finishes third in that group get like more points, then Hungary drop down, and therefore the only team that Spain can play is the Dutch. Yeah. So then we get uh, Slovakia. Slovakia. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're hoping. We love the Slovs. <laughs> but even that Slovakia will be a tough game if you see yeah. the way they play. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They've been playing well. There's, there's actually some tactics instead of <laughs> Gar- Southgate ball. Oh, sorry. The less said. I mean, it's good to make videos on them because when you're angry, <laughs> yeah. people like to watch it. So. Yeah. It's good. It's I mean, good. Is there a tactic there, or is it just like just... It's, it's just, <laughs> just it's, it's literally like keep the ball circulating, work hard, and that's it. And yeah, that's not going to work in Euros. No, 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 absolutely not. I mean, uh, I've enjoyed like the whole you know getting to semifinals and stuff like that. That's but getting to a final is great. It's time. It's time. It's, 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 yeah. it's time to go. Uh, for me, I'm like, I'm like just win us the Euros and then just go away. And that's yeah, what I'm agreed. happy with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Win us the Euros, then leave. But if he wins, yeah, the FA will be like, oh wait, World Cup in no. less, than, less than two oh, years. No, Let's go again. No, no. <laughs> that's the. But the thing is though, like, I, I pose you the question: Would you would you rather lose in the final and lose Southgate, or win the Euros and keep Southgate? <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's not a difficult surely question. Surely, it's it not a difficult question. question. Surely. I mean, winning would be good, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you win it, and then 2026, yeah. you lose he, in the quarters, at least you win it. Yeah, at least like you've won like the Euros. That. Like, yeah. yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't, you, it's like that um, Arsenal-Tottenham situation yeah. In, yeah. in May. When, yeah, oh, shit, yeah, that was yeah, mental. Yeah. It's like, oh, Tottenham need to lose. So Sorry, it, the fans, Tottenham fans wanted Tottenham to, to lose, lose, which so is Arsenal weird. Is like, yeah. At the end of the day, you still want to win. Ange was not happy. <laughs> Ange was <laughs> not happy. I'm having, speaking about Ange on, on ITV, yeah. it's the first time I saw him laughing. Yes. In, yeah. in the panel, it's like, I've never seen him smile before. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're managing Spurs. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's let's talk about you, not not just the football. Okay. Uh, I want to know kind of how you started on, on social media. What was the, what was the idea? Um, so... I mean, last year, back in August, I, I was managing my friend's Sunday team and it was good. I managed them up to December and then I got better opportunities. But um, in in Sunday League, I was having my board discussing tactics mm. and it was in this like weird looking changing room. You yeah. know how it is yeah, in the park yeah, yeah, yeah. on a Sunday morning. And obviously that would get views because people were like, wait, who, who, does he, who, the, who does this person think he is? <laughs> and that was when I had no Instagram page, nothing. Yeah, yeah, but then yeah. a few videos that I did start posting on my new page, um, you know, some people are like, oh wait, can you explain that further? Mm. And then in, in my room, I literally explained that, and then one video just just blew, blew up. up. Yeah. That's when I realized, hang on a minute, this video personally wasn't, it, it wasn't that complicated to understand. So I thought, oh, so there's a there's yeah. a USP here. Yeah. I just explain tactics that are basic in terms of understanding on mm. the pitch, but for people, it's just interesting to see someone talking and moving stuff around. Yeah. And then, as you know, one thing leads to another. You 
talk about one tactic and then it's yeah. like oh let's talk about Man United oh let's talk about Arsenal okay now we started let's do match yeah. previews yeah. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. before you know it, you're doing Champions League and Euros and all of that so yeah, yeah. it's just like a culmination of everything really. mm. <laughs> one of the one of the videos that caught my eye um was actually someone else talking about one of your videos initially I guess, it was I, the I it, was it was the England one I believe yeah really Was it him? It's him, yeah, I know. Okay, I can't remember who it was. So, so, but... so, we, so we played against him. Yeah. yeah. And he was trying to make a video j anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've completely, this has completely gone over my head. He, he does. His. Yeah. Plays. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, we don't know yeah, them personally. Okay. I, I was going to say, I have no idea who you're on about. I don't but... think we know them personally, but. Okay. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, no, I mean. I think it's weird that like no one else has kind of gone down this route of like going over tactics because it's such a, like an integral part of football but like nobody unless you're like properly into it like trying to manage stuff like that you don't really talk about it much yeah uh, and I personally think like if, if, if you you know whatever game you watch there is something there to learn mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people just watch it to, to enjoy it that, that's fine but yeah. I personally enjoy watching plays off the ball and seeing how they affect yeah. what yeah. happens how they influence what happens with the player on the ball. Yeah. I just really like that aspect. And that's where my enjoyment is. Mm. And people still say, oh, I would never want to watch a game with you. <laughs> I'm like, cool, that's fine. Don't. Don't watch a game. I haven't asked you. Yeah. <laughs> was, um, so was management kind of, or tactics and, like, and, and understanding analysis, all of that, was that always kind of your passion growing up or was it more playing kind of? Yeah, so, so obviously I, I played at various academies when I was younger and then at different semi-professional teams at mm. the men's level. And I just felt like, the way I, I just felt because I was playing as a number six in the centre midfield. Yeah, yeah. I always had that understanding, like, oh wait, if my left back goes here, yeah. I have the space, then I can pop it off. Mm. And then during the game, I might sometimes instruct him to do it, and then I see it works. And then at home, I'm thinking, if my manager plays me here and plays him there, he yeah. can do this. But it just never happened. So yeah. that desire to always have your team to try that stuff out yeah. has always like propelled me in, in this direction yeah. on Instagram, yeah. TikTok, and stuff. But with regards to playing, I just really enjoyed playing that, you know, from the back and yep. getting on the ball, mm. popping it off, you know, little reverse balls and stuff like yeah. that. It's just, <laughs> it's just in non-league, in, in men's semi-professional football, when it's constantly long ball, yeah, you I just never really hard. enjoyed it. So yeah. I thought, like, I'm just running around. Anyone could do it. Yeah. So I might as well just start. That's kind of the point. Is <laughs> <something>. <laughs> yeah. But the point is that anyone can be like w turning up at 10 o'clock in the morning, hung over and, hung <laughs> over and still yeah. manage to play a game. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so then, uh, it was, I mean, e even at the Saturday level, when you're playing, let's say, at a certain non-league uh, pyramid sort of section mm -hmm. it's like it was fun but it's not the way I wanted to play football and I thought yeah. if I'm not in control sometimes I'm I'm on the bench because I, I'm not doing that long board because I want to play yeah. I thought let me just start my own journey really. yeah exactly <laughs> so uh, how's that journey been going for you so far yeah I mean as you've seen with the online stuff and I'm, I'll be managing two different teams one Saturday one Sunday from the new season okay oh, nice. so I'm just very excited can you to... say who, who those teams are uh, has it been mm -hmm. announced yet no, not, not yet. yet. Uh, so, I mean, we'll save it. I mean, yeah, it'll be, it'll be so it'll be Carpet FC on Sundays, okay, and okay. then Active Sports FC on Saturdays. Nice. nice. So um, I'm just really excited just to get started because they've all seen my stuff. They, they've all bought into me in terms yeah. of what I want to mm. do. So did, did they reach out to you? Yeah. Or, oh, they reached out to you. Okay. And and Carpet FC reached out to me before I had blew up online. So so oh, okay. nice. so the chairman was seeing some of my videos, and. He saw something in me, which is why I value like these two teams and active sports as well. Yeah. So yeah. I value the, these teams because they reached out to me before the numbers. Yeah. Which means that. So they, it's not like a social media thing. It's a proper like yeah. they, they like yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. So so they bought into like my brain or, or how yeah. I see the game. Yeah. If other, if people reach out to me now, I, I fully respect it, of course, when it comes to mm. like management. But at the back of my mind, I'm like, is it because of the numbers? They just want yeah. their team to explode. What yeah. Is yeah, it? yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm always yeah. going to remember. And, and give my all to, to, to these two teams. Yeah. No, of course. <laughs> There's another team that you're potentially going to be working for at some point. Is a team in the, uh, was it Saudi Arabia or Qatar? I forget, where, I forget which country it is. Qatar? Al-Kabila. Oh, we've yeah. Got to, we've got to talk about Al-Kabila. Because <laughs> I would say... Cause, yeah, because we, we know uh, Jersey Bird, who obviously... Yes, yes. Yeah, Jersey Bird. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, and that's obviously how we like when... When I, f I started seeing your stuff and then I saw that I was like then there's another link there I was like oh brilliant yeah <laughs> we're getting everybody in who's involved like <laughs> I mean I, I saw that I saw them um, 
Al Kabila video where they were talking about their potential new coaches after they kind of put it out there. And obviously, he's oh, this Rafa has been mentioned. I, we like him. We're going to talk to him. We're going <laughs> to see what we can do. So, is there, are, we, are you going over there? Are you going to try and do some work with them? So, um, physically, no, but it will be more online. Sort okay. Of thing. okay. So, so um, you know, when they play their regular matches, it could be like a team meeting where mm-hmm. we discuss stuff yeah. online and stuff. But okay. who knows in the future? Because, you know, as I get my UEFA C license mm. and hopefully <coughs> UEFA B, uh, and, and when they get to the Division 1 of their league and, and when they become fully professional, then yeah, of course. I mean, they are professional, but when they're in the biggest league yeah, in, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. in UAE. UAE, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll be very up. happy to, you know, go down there. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah, weather there, at least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be, it'd be like this, but hotter constantly. Yeah. It sounds pretty good. I mean, yeah. just, just your body adapts, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be calm. I'd be lovely. Yeah. Oh, I've, been, yeah. I've been loving this heat as well. Just, I mean, Ugh. I'm slightly more tan than I usually am. I was going to say, because I, I, I just burn. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm the whitest still. guy you'll ever meet. Like, I just, <laughs> I just, I burn. So, this is like we dangerous had, for me. We but. had Ruin earlier, who's uh, one of our close. Again, these lights yeah. really make him glow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ru. And I just completely called you out for uh, that. But, uh, no, yeah, it's, I haven't been on holiday somewhere hot in a f- 10 months, 9 yeah. months. I'm missing it. Oh, God, I haven't been in like three months. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I was in America like yes. uh, two weeks ago for uh, oh, TST, nice. the big oh, seven nice. side tournament. Oh, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, So I was part of the coaching team of, of a team, and we, and we lost to Wrexham in the round of 32. Yeah, oh, damn. But the, the heat there in North Carolina was Im- like, it was <sighs> immense. He was like, you walk out, you get out of your house, it's like, it's like a wall of humidity just oh, yeah. stepping oh, in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, TST seven aside, it was it was so fun. How did, how did that come about with yeah. you? Um, just just from my page. Yeah. So, so so the manager of one of the teams reached out to me and said, "Look, it'll be great to have you physically here." Yeah. But I understand if you can't. And then they we worked something out, and I actually went there. Uh, just just the it's it was the second ever time they launched this tournament. So last year was its first ever time. Yeah. And this year we had Team Aguero, and Aguero was playing. Yeah. yeah. Nan, <sighs> Nanny's team got to the yeah. final and they lost. We had Tom Huddleston, Stephen Island, yeah. and they mm. lost in the quarterfinals, I think. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was just a brilliant experience because in that tournament, after 40 minutes, it's not game over, it's mm. target score time. Mm. So if, okay. if I'm playing against you yeah. and we've won 3 0, mm. it's up to 4 because it's plus 1. So you could end up winning 4 3 in target score time. Oh, okay, so so you have to, so either you score the next goal and then you just win, yeah. or we have a chance to get up to 4. Yeah. Oh, that... But then every three okay. minutes, a play gets taken off from both teams. So oh, okay. it becomes 6 v yeah, 6. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually becomes, and the lowest it goes down to is 2v2. <sighs> so you can imagine if you have the ball, yeah. you take your keeper off, bring on a ball player, yeah. just to go all the way up to the opposition's goal. Yeah. And it's just a 2v1 with their keeper standing there. You just pass, pass, pass until you score. And if yeah. you do lose the ball, they just launch it in and it scores. Yeah. And that happened yeah. a few times. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, Damn. one team were 4 0 down and target score, they won 5 4. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it it was an it was an incredible experience, and hopefully next year I can yeah. I can do something and go yeah. there again with another 100%. team because right. yeah. I mean, it's always good to experience like new ways of playing football. Like it was before, it was like started with eleven sides, and you have like five aside stuff like that. Yeah. But now with like adding more like modes like that, like I don't know if you've seen like old school MLS penalties when like, they run up to when they run up yeah, to yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, adding stuff like that is just like really fun. Like giving them something different to watch like exactly and, and also the fact that, the, that there were no offsides <laughs> oh yeah. were there not yeah. oh, it's because America man <laughs> so, so, so you just stretch the pitch get your striker yeah. on, the, on like the goalkeeper all yeah. around there and then the rule in America it wasn't like too specific it was like the striker cannot be standing in the opposition's penalty box when you have the ball in your own half okay. right okay and then I was like like can they roam around it? They, they, they were like yeah but n- not cherry picking so, so like yeah, you can roam stand, you yeah. can roam but not just stand because yeah what, just keep moving. for whatever reason it was yeah. just like some of the rules weren't as clear as they should have been yeah mm. need to clarify that but like yeah <laughs> it was like when I was at school like I don't know if you were the same like when I was at school I didn't know anything about football to start with uh, I was just like when we used to play I was just stand in the box next to the keeper just be like I'm going to score a goal and they're like mate um, there's a thing called offside <laughs> yeah the, the, that's tactical understanding though yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> staying away from the play get the ball score <laughs> <Easy>. <laughs> But uh, I have actually seen your tactics uh, win win a trophy uh, recently for uh, Konzi Production. Yes. Yes. That was the first time I saw you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So that was at uh, Selhurst Park, which was a... Yeah, I I mean, considering I really started this journey in January, Mm. in May, I'm in Crystal Palace Stadium and and in in America straight after. So, like, everything's gone too quickly for me as well. (laughs) Is Is there such thing? Sorry? Is there such thing as too quickly? Yeah, exactly. That's a good point as well. It's just the way it is, I guess. Yeah. 
And then another thing is my Instagram getting banned. Yes, like, yeah, yeah, we yeah. saw that. So how's how's what's happening with that? Hopefully by the time this is out, it might yeah, be rectified. Or I mean, I posted a video of, of Granite Xhaka. I mean, this is typical me, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I saw Granite Xhaka against uh, so it was Switzerland versus I think Hungary, hmm. and I saw Granite Xhaka point to Abiska to invert in this area. Yeah. And when he did that, he got the ball and he created a chance. So I yeah. posted a video saying coach Granite Xhaka, and my face was in the video, so it's not copyright because. By fair use policy, yeah. you can post other people's content as long as you add your own contribution and educational value to it. Okay, so it's his him, him pointing and then it's your face. Yes, and, and okay. it's the video. Okay. But then like 20 minutes later, it got taken down and then my account just got suspended. And then it's, it's obviously UEFA because yeah. they have some algorithm or AI. Whatever yeah, automatically it. just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's like, it's been, what, 11 days and I've appealed and, and just no response because Instagram servers and there's no custom there's no human being really to, to, to talk to yeah yeah that's shocking. there's that no is... like on YouTube you have three strikes which is good yeah, and yeah, they, yeah. they literally say one out of three to on Instagram it's like so sporadic so random yeah so um yeah starting that's on my new page how's that going it's good I guess but you just have to you just have to start from zero yeah and just build your way up but I mean you have your other platform you've got your other platforms I guess you can kind of yeah. work off but like it's still it's like really annoying that like, when they do was, that was Instagram kind of your your main favorite one or it, i mean I, I don't really have a favorite it was just like it's just another platform yeah that, yeah, that yeah. I, I was very big on yeah, yeah i mean exactly. to have over a hundred thousand followers on instagram's generally it's a very, very good sign it's very yeah. hard as well yeah on tiktok yeah. it's much easier tiktok is much say. easier to big get people because you can just scroll follow scroll follow. like it's so easy just to tap in with instagram you kind of got to go go in and click in and like, all that kind of stuff yeah. it's it's, it's, it's not a little, little thing isn't it like clicking into a profile to follow someone but like it's it's that extra effort that some people just aren't willing to do and exactly. it takes a massive chunk out but but um, I mean yeah as you said it's, it's part of the journey Yeah, I was yeah. very annoyed for like two three days but and then I realised let's just start again new yeah. page let's just post the same videos that blew me up yeah. in January again and let's see where that takes me but with the Crystal Palace tournament yeah so I was, we were playing six aside yeah. mm. yeah. I used a goalkeeper as an extra centre back nice. which freed one of our players further up the pitch mm. And yeah, we would just ended up winning the whole thing. Yeah, no, because because the first game was you. I think you lost the first game. Yeah, we lost. Do you know Coach Kane? Yeah. So so yeah. we lost to his team, and then in the final we beat his team. Yeah, nice. It was it was very full circle. Redemption arc. Yeah, yeah. It was very full circle. I mean, I can't. Remember, I spoke to your striker. I can't remember his name now. Um, big guy up top. Was he playing him up top? or Was more of a winger. Uh, what was his name? Sean Stocky. I forgot his name. Felix. Is it Felix? Montel, Montel Mc... maybe no, no, not Montel because he came late, didn't he? Yeah, um, were you there? Yeah, I was there. Really? Yeah, I was watching. No way. <laughs> that's why I said that's the first time I've seen. I've actually seen oh, your I tactics. Thought, like, I, I thought <laughs> the first time you saw me was online. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. That was the first time I've, I've seen it in person. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was I've there. seen you online first, obviously. So did you see my goal in the final? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was there. I think I had to get that in. Uh, <laughs> so I was there. Bro. Okay, because um, because I was like, initially, because I saw you when you was a warming up far side. Yeah. Mm. And I thought, I thought for a second you were, um, oh, who's the guy that used to be on, obviously, True Geordie's kickoff, but now oh, is... Lawrence? Not Lawrence. It's on the same podcast. Oh, um, well, the Chelsea fan or the... No, the United fan. Oh, Adam McCola. Yeah. I yeah, thought yeah, you, yeah. for some reason, from a distance, you were Adam McCola. And, okay. then, and then as you walked over, I was like, oh, no, that's Raffers. Okay. Um, you, you know um, the face, to be fair. You might not know the name. So um, uh, you must have spoken to Felix. He was our striker, short, stocky. Yeah, 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 Felix, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. He, he looked like an absolute pain in the ass to defend. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. He, he's the chairman of okay. Carpet FC. Is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the guy. Oh, hey, yeah, well, I've seen him a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, so he's, he's the chairman of Carpet FC. Okay. And he's the one who messaged me back in January. Oh, yeah. okay. That's him. Yeah. So how, how do you know Konzi? Through Felix. Through Felix. Yeah. So, okay. so all this opportunity this opportunity with um, Konzi Productions came through Felix. Okay. You know, right. con you know how football works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, But yeah, it was a very fun tournament. I enjoyed it. Meeting, um, who else did I meet? Obviously, do you know Mark White from Dorking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was in the match afterwards. Yeah. Celebrity that's, that's, match. He was, uh, he was one of the coaches. Yeah. And obviously, I've watched a lot of the documentary, so I just went up to him just yeah. to say, "Look, thank you for all you, all you that you've been doing." But yeah, it was just a really good experience. Really. Yeah, no, yeah. it was really, it was very cool. I, Konzi kind of invited uh, me and Carlos, one of our other content creators, okay, uh, one of our yes. other co-hosts, down. I see. Um, mm. Obviously, saw Dave as well. That was quite quite cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he apparently was a bit annoyed. <laughs> yeah, he looked because he wasn't he wasn't collaborating with anyone. He was just <laughs> yeah, bro. He was he just seemed <laughs> fed up, and he was also like free roaming up. when he was playing. There yeah. was no position to it. No, he's just kind of. But I think uh, he probably just got told. 
just go and do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> You're Dave, like, in comparison to everyone else, say just go and do what you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he just he did look a bit fed up. I saw him afterwards as well, because um, me and Carlos left, and then he just came out the side, and I was like, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> just like, <laughs> just it was Dave, Dave's just about chilling. Oh, I, th- I think, we, did we actually say hi to each other? And I think the, so. But by the yeah. outside, by the outside know, part, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. when he said Carlos, I remember that name. Yeah, yes. yeah, okay. I've He's got uh, you. unique as is Carlos. To be fair, it's just Spanish and everyone else is English, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not that, it's not that difficult. I remember he. It's not add a bit of mystery to him. But I remember in a recent happened. podcast. Uh, it was like a, we did like this, you know, this, the what's happening girl thing, and because Carlos obviously first language isn't English, yeah. he went. It's like he's in a sprint with us, but with no legs. <laughs> That's how he described it. Yeah. Sounds about right. Why? I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. It's a phrase in Spanish. Uh, no, no, no. Henry said it about Carlos. Oh, I see. Because obviously his first language is in English. Yeah. He's trying to do an English thing. Yeah. You yeah. were saying that apparently because... That's <laughs> just stupid. I, I do dumb jokes sometimes. Let's, let's... So I do so dumb jokes that I've forgotten I said them. So <laughs> <laughs> Let's do... You You said you wanted to do... Uh, Maresca, what, how, how you think Maresca's Chelsea is going to yes. shape up? I think... Would you like to talk about that? Of yeah. course, I, yeah. I think it's be it's going to be one of those things where maybe first few games there will mm. be some big problems mm-hmm. with mm. the team adapting to that style of football where they want to really play from the back, control the game with the keeper, mm. get one of the fullbacks to come into the middle, and as we've seen with Andrew Postecoglou with the high line and stuff, it could be one of those things. So yeah. social media, yeah. there could be a few little things going on. Oh, look at Moreska, he thinks he's big time or whatever. <laughs> but I genuinely think for the long term he could be very very good for Chelsea. Yeah, mm. the only weakness I see is him not being able to adapt to teams that will find him out mm. so in the championship he had a very big gap in, in terms of quality the, and, no, mm. and in terms of he was like 18 19 points clear and then he ended up being a to- close yeah. title yeah. yes i mean so, yeah. so as i said to you before i'm a united fan because yeah. I've, I've got taste you see um <laughs> but uh, my dad and like a lot of my family are Ipswich fans so i watched a lot of the Ipswich season um and i was like okay it's done now no, about halfway through I was like it's done now Let's just, let, I looked at that team I thought you should smoke the league anyway this is about right yeah. and then by the end of it they were just dropping points left right and centre yeah. so I think you, you can totally right like it's gonna they're gonna figure it out pretty quick. they might even know it right at the start do you think that might be in a players thing like just feeling too comfortable that's a good point yeah because I bet a lot of those players aren't used to necessarily being in that position in a league 18 like well, being it was eight, a big point be like yeah. those that's kind right of players 18. aren't like they've just been relegated realistically they're not used to like being top of a league for example yeah. I mean I know Leicester have won but that was what that was a while ago now like nine years now yeah. it's not um, the same players, so in terms of the players it's not going to have, have that same mm. kind of winning mentality yeah. so there's a probably potential that when 18 points clear and a lot of the players just went sure. no I'm good yeah. Yeah. And well, like, but, but then you could argue that's down to the manager to keep that mentality yeah. and but keep, I think sometimes in this standards. in this football day and age sometimes players egos can just be slightly bigger they're harder to manage in terms of they think that they're yeah gospel whatever yeah yeah but uh, but definitely i could see someone like lavio caicedo really shining I, I think we'll see the best from them because yeah. po- pochettino slowly found the formula by bringing cucurella in the middle yeah. which is which is interesting that actually moresca does the same thing exactly maybe yeah. it was all planned from pochettino <laughs> he knew he was going to leave he knew they were going to bring in moresca let's might just play well, might as well help him out yeah, yeah. <laughs> might as well <laughs> teach them what they need to learn for next season yeah, but, but that's why like, like when i made a video um about moresca to chelsea it's like there's nothing too different to how pochettino ended the season and what Ms. Mariska wants to do mm-hmm. unless Mariska will come in and see the quality and come with something new because sometimes that's what happens with managers that yeah. are very smart like Pep Guardiola he's always changed his ideas because of the quality he's had mm. yeah you know yeah, exactly. kind of every season he does send to bring in something new something different he yeah. changes his style yeah. but I, I, I like to think that's just because he's getting bored <laughs> in my back of my head I'm just thinking he's getting bored scary, trying to make it harder <laughs> so for himself scary. That is. Like, he decided he's to play gone... an entire season without a striker he's yeah. just like fuck it I'm just going to try it without yeah. a striker like, <laughs> and then oh, the I'll happen? bring in Haaland yeah. and then Stones yeah just go there just go in midfield Guardiola will become the left winger yeah. as well <laughs> like, wow Guardiola playing like prime Messi no. yeah Edison like... centre back no problem yeah. it's, it's, so obviously Maresca did work under Pep Guardiola mm-hmm. and yes, so did Arteta and we can see what Arteta's finally you know, Chelsea are awesome. definitely trying to take a repeat of, of Arteta, I think. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. I don't know if it works. This is the thing, right? It's the annoying thing is that you said it's gonna probably going to get found out a bit in the first season. That was supposed to be last season. That was supposed to be Poch getting found out a little bit in his first season. And they've decided to sack him and just go I down this new route. I don't know if it was route. a sacking. I think it was they both just didn't agree with each other. I think the board Maybe. and him just personality-wise didn't work. 
Yeah, I mean, so it's not. It's less of a sacking. I, 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 I don't hope know, so because if it is a sacking, I think it's quite a poor one. Because especially when you're like trying to build this project and then giving up after one year, it's a bit like, is this ever going to work with anybody? But yeah, we'll but find out. Just, I, guess. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely, I'm looking at players like Madawiki and uh, Nkunku finally back and mm. fit. Reese James, mm. Gusto, Cucurella. That's a big comp. Like you have Gusto, Reese James, and Cucurella. Oh, yeah. Two fullback spots. Yeah. One of them have to come into the middle. Obviously, we've seen what Cucurella's doing right now for Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even at the end of last season, exactly. his last five games exactly. for he's, he's, yeah. he's levelled up. And, and the thing is, he doesn't do anything too dramatic on the ball. He just keeps it part, like ticking and moving. He, he in passes the right it way. quickly. Yeah, yeah. Which, which, is, which, really which we know Mariska likes because, of course, he he went out and bought Harry Winks to sit yeah. in that deep role and to do that. Yeah. Um, and he was just that. He's, he, that's the one thing Harry, Harry Winks is such an ordinary footballer, but the one thing he can do is just recycle possession. And like, if you sit him deep. Like that's what he can do, uh, and if you have Kukurea in there, he can do that job. But, but, yeah, but, uh, because the whole point of bringing a fullback in mm. it, to make it full midfielders is to yeah. get one of your midfielders to do something different exactly. from their traditional roles. Exactly. If you have three, it's like okay, DM has to do this. Two number eight or one number eight and ten have to do this. Yeah. Now you bring in a fullback who could do the number six role. Yeah, exactly. Now you're freeing someone else, uh, so, someone like Palmer and Kuku, mm. Lavia, Kaiseido, Enzo, to become more of that, you know, different uh, mm. player. Whether that's Palmer. You know, in pockets, yeah. and so dropping deeper, and then going for like. So I think it gives a, a totally different look to Chelsea. Mm. Yeah. I think it's it's something that's happening a lot more in the modern game, and it's something I am all for, like using the midfield. But you start to see it getting abused at certain points, and by that I'm talking about Kieran Trippier playing left back for England yeah. when he hasn't got a left foot. That's because we haven't got anyone else to play there. Because we should have. Well, we should have brought someone else in the yes, squad. This, but, this is what Gav's chosen to do. So. Like I, I like with it's like people like Kukurea, he's got a left foot, that's fine. Dallo can play with either foot, that's fine. But when it's like a left back, a right back playing at left back, and he never played there before, doesn't necessarily have that weak foot at all. Like you say about Gusto, I'm not sure because I don't know if I yeah. trust somebody to get it on his left foot from the left area, exactly. left back area. Because it's uh, yeah. as much as he's going to be playing midfield a lot, he's still a left back, and there will be times where he's going to have to try and like yeah. overlap on that left hand side, and I just don't because he yeah, had, good point to cut back in. I, I'm just looking at how Gusto Palmer had a very good relationship on yeah. the right side. Yeah. So it'd be a big call whether it's James, uh, Gusto, Cucurella. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it probably will be James. He's the club captain. He's probably going to start. But like the fact that you've got Gusto is like your reserve right back is yeah, like definitely. such good depth yeah. and like a real advice that you can take advantage of. Well, let's let's see the teams then. So we'll, we'll go through positions. Obviously, yeah. I, I, as the Chelsea fan, I'll just kind of. <laughs> See if I agree or not with okay. your, your calls. Yeah. Um. But we'll start off in goal. Shall I? Shall I give a bit of context? To, so basically, I, I. Yes, he's already done this before. Before we knew you were coming on, I was. We were talking about Mariska, and I basically went, "Okay, fuck it, I'm going to put the team together." So you I went, spent half an hour. Just made I spent a team. Ha- I spent <laughs> half an hour. Went online, found an article on his tactics, tried to understand. The, I'm not as uh, in depth as you, so I no, like, no, no. tried to understand the basics. Um. And th- okay, okay, who f- matches that at Chelsea? So. You, you, you definitely went for more of a who matches his Current, Leicester side yeah. rather than maybe adapting it with the players that Chelsea yeah, have. Exactly. Okay, that's interesting. Because after one season, all we know is that he stuck by his tactics. So I thought he's quite stick stick to what he likes. He doesn't like to change or ja- adapt. Like the players have to adapt to him. So I thought he's probably going to stick with it. I, I see no reason why he would change it. So I was like, I stick with that. Um, goalkeeper is Petkovic. I don't think there's another option. <laughs> Unless Basically. we sign something, we, 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 yeah. Things. I mean, we haven't seen enough of Sanchez. Uh, I, I, I personally, I've watched Chelsea play. I haven't really focused on the keeper. Yeah, that's no. fair. <laughs> so it's mainly Neither. been. I I like Petrovic. Okay, Petrovic. Sorry, he's uh, 25, 26. Okay, is he? I, th- I think. Oh, I thought he was Petrovic. younger than that. I thought he was like twenty two. No, no, he's not. He's definitely not twenty two. He's definitely it's just not. about how comfortable he is playing from the back. I, th- I Which think we didn't he's, see much. He's twenty four. Sorry, he's twenty four. Okay. Um. Okay. He he's Serbian. Yeah, um, and that's about all we know about him. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, he, I think he he definitely had a, a good season last season. Um, saves wise, very good. It, and just more comf- He was like the, the thing with Sanchez on the ball. My dad would get furious about this because he looks so relaxed on the ball, Uh-oh. which is what you want. Uh-oh. But then yeah, just I- like. Fuck it at the end. Yeah. Like, 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 he acts so nonchalant and then kicks it out. I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Be confident and do something smart but, with it. Whereas but. Petrovic seemed so much more kind of like, I'm doing this, I'm just going to 
kick it to you purposefully like, yeah that there's more intent behind yeah. it yeah yeah and like he, he actually it wasn't perfect from the back yeah but he could still you know he'd find the, the right back when they were on yeah. the touch line and and i think if you look at that leicester team the center halves weren't the best ball players whereas i think we have a lot better ball players. exactly so you could use your center backs a lot more and maybe it's a lot less opportunity to try and play out from the back through the goalkeeper rather than just yeah. moving it into the center halves yeah. and starting there Definitely. But yeah, it definitely gives us more options. So we'll, we'll move into yeah. the... We'll, we'll do the centre-backs first, Yeah, I think, just because, obviously, we just, just mentioned them. Yeah, go on, you so go first. You go, you go first. So definitely on that left side, it will be Colwell. Yeah, I think yeah. that's I pretty... Think it's, it's, a, it's a big miss as well. England didn't even take any yeah. left-footed centre-back. Oh, mate. It makes a big And difference. also no Branthwaite. Exactly. Oh, that's it, a whole other problem. It makes a big difference when yeah. you don't have an outlet forget about left back in the middle yeah. someone with their left foot well, ball comes yeah. from the right play to the left it would have exactly. fit because Colwell then could have probably slotted into that left back spot exactly. as well yeah. Imagine that or team. taking yeah. Colwell as a, as a left centre back I, I was, saying, if he was brought I as a left centre back he could him. then be yeah, played exactly. as a left back if we needed it and we do <laughs> I, do, I, I like Gahey I think he's quite good he's and I, but you could have done something different there where you like, either like you don't play Gahey or you like play Gahey and move Stones into midfield or something like that Southgate um, doesn't have that understanding he doesn't, he doesn't no he, he doesn't he just doesn't he may understand it. I think he just doesn't back himself to do no. it. Well, uh, yeah. or he doesn't want to do it. I think it's more of a because it would have been it would have been Maguire and Stones. So it's Gahey and Stones, and yeah. it's <laughs> Gahey's the closest you get to Harry Maguire without being Harry Maguire. Yeah, I so, think he's better as well. Well, he is. I I agree. I think on the ball, well, he's been he's been quietly one of England's better players Agreed. throughout the tournament. I, I thought our defense is actually. I, I wouldn't even good. say quietly anymore. Yeah, I've I've been listening to the rest of this football podcast, and all three of Gary Lineker, Shearer, and Mika Richards are all waxing lyrical about him. Yeah, I'm oh, fair enough. Yeah. That's good. I'm, I'm happy that. Yeah. I'm happy that but players like like under the radar actually getting the credit they agree. deserve. Yeah. But I mean, you look at that. I think we complained about England's attack because we don't score enough. But like our defense has been fine. Two clean sheets out of three. Yeah. The third one was a do- like a really good goal. But the thing is, like, these are expected clean sheets. Mm, it's, it's, nothing, it's the goals that's the issue. It's like Slovenia sitting back, no threat. Yeah. Um, Serbia as well here and there. They were, Denmark. Okay, they sort of brought the game to England. It's, it's sort of expected mm. not to concede yeah. against Serbia, Slovenia. Yeah. But as the, the, you can only play what's in front of you, and the defense is the, the defense has been good, and it's always been good. So let's, let's be yeah. honest in history, but it's just yeah. the rest of it. Yeah. Anyway, so your your right centre back. So yeah. So so Colwell, and then I'm looking at Fofana. Yep. Fofana yeah. especially. Just I think those two. If they if, can... if he's not fully fit, who's your backup? I would go more Chalaba. Yeah. I like Chalaba. I really like Chalaba. I mean. How different is Chalaba and Desasi in terms of Chalaba's taller? Okay. Um, probably slightly better uh, ball playing. Desasi's much more of a powerhouse. Yeah. Um, remember his, I saw every one of his goals. I think it was against. I can't think of my FA Cup. Uh, he he's he's not slow. Yeah. But neither of them are particularly. Okay. You haven't really got many slow centre backs. No. They're all reasonably. Desa- even by the shields. Decently yeah. fast, and I, I think I think him and Cole will. I think, but I think Badashile next season will start to get better. He was doing a lot better than the last yeah, season as well. Was. I think the injury really knocked him, meant meant more mentally than physically, because yeah. yeah. it was when he came back from the injury and he just he just made he just had that kind of mistake in him, that hesitance. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I think just with a bit of time, he will become good. And I remember when he first came in, and he was playing next to Thiago Silva, and I thought he was probably our best centre back that season yeah well I thought Thiago Silva has been your best centre back for years and you just lost him Yeah. Uh, which is a shame because you lose that experience so I probably would have had him start but I'm glad we've had him for the time we've had because there's a lot of young yeah. young centre backs who've, yeah. Yeah, who've <sighs> been playing behind him Yeah. I mean I'd rather not have one of De Sassi or Badi Shile and have somebody maybe not Thiago Silva but somebody else of age and experience yeah. uh, I'm, I'm I'm a, name, that, a name that I keep bringing up because um, I linked him with us actually it, never, it would never happen but I, I, I'd like to see it happen um, is Sebastian Coates from Sporting he's oh. even on a free transfer great leader physicality a bit older a bit of an older head experience be, I think that would be excellent yeah, yeah definitely. I, I like him he's, I think he's 33 or something like 30, that no, yeah. yeah but like I, I always when I do on FM it's always like I sign him because he's got like 17 leadership and I'm like yeah okay we need a captain <laughs> um but I'll go through my centre backs really quickly. So Colwell, yeah. Yeah. The great thing about Colwell, as much as he's great with the ball at his feet, he also completes the most aerial duels out of anybody any of the other defenders. Oh wow. So okay. he's done yeah. his analysis by the way on this. That's good. That's <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, Through yeah. the uni I get access to Y Scout so I can just look up all the oh, stats. Oh you do Y Scout, yeah. Oh yeah, mate, yeah. I love Y Scout. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's a cheat code, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'd I'd go I'd go with um him. He's he's the first name I'd look at. And then 
none of the other centre backs like impressed me that much. Bally Chile Fofana's didn't. Fofana's not played for like a season. Fofana has been injured for two years basically. Season but I think yeah, if yeah. Fofana's fit, he under Mariska yeah. that type of football, I think he would be really. Part, I think he could be shorter. Phenomenal. But like, the thing is, when every time Fofana comes back. Like he's our best centre back every yeah, time he comes yeah, back, yeah. and then just gets injured. But like, it's like Lissandro what, Martinez. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah but yeah, but yeah. what I like about Fafana, but Mr. Martinez is injured less. But yeah. Yeah. But what I like about Fafana is even when he comes back from injury, it, his his level doesn't seem to drop. Okay. No. Which is okay. good. That's a sign of a very good player. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I mean, I mean, you've you've hammered me for this multiple times. But I'm I'm a big fan of the academy boy. Obviously, we have Man United fans like with the class of '92 and all the academy boys coming. They're always an academy boy in the in the side every single time. Um, so I like to. You've already got an academy boy left centre back. You don't have I to like put to, another one in. But what that means is I like to prioritise them. So I say another right footer who has experience at right back. If you want to press out and drop somebody, yeah, four um, games. <laughs> like, who, who are we talking about? Uh, Gilchrist. I'm a big, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah. big fan of okay. Gilchrist. He's got that John Terry about him. Yeah. Yes, like he that, does. That fan but he's just, appeal, he's, like... He'll always give you eight out of ten. Exactly. Yeah, he's yeah, just yeah, yeah. slightly too young. Even if you go away, let's say in conference, are you in the Chelsea in the conference league? Yeah. Yeah. So away from home, because you guys decided to manage to figure out with Leon or whatever. <laughs> what was the club that you? Co- yeah, yeah, I think it was Leon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and niece, you niece, managed niece, to get niece. away with with being both in the Europa League. You cheeky. Fucks. Yeah, but we can't have um, Tadebo. You can't have it's about Sabio is going to Man City, which is a, another oh. found a loophole. With so you that. can't have Tadebo. We can't have him. Why? Because it's they're both in the same competition, so you can't UEFA would block it. Oh, so you can't sign in. It also means we can't have Turam, who is another really? man I wanted. Yeah. What rule is that? Have? Because, because, you, because your owners, Ratcliffe, own Nice. You nice can't and transfer. Yeah. If they're in the same competition, so the loophole is yeah, Sabio was a Troyers who but, aren't in Europe. But you also so shouldn't care. have been able to play in the same competition because there was that whole thing with Man City and... But that didn't... That Girona. Didn't, Girona. But they didn't do anything about it. Yeah. They're both playing in the Champions League. They're, yeah. The UEFA have bowled it, basically. Yeah. yeah well, they've half bowled it. <laughs> they have bowled it because what I would have loved is if you guys won the FA Cup thinking you got Europa League and then didn't get Didn't it? it? Yeah, that would, <laughs> would have be been like, stupid. That would have been so good sweet. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I mean, with Gilchrist, Conference League, let's say you're away from home in some cold, yeah, you could play yeah. shoot, cold Thursday night stadium yeah. in like Eastern Europe. And he, he's like, he, he, he played really he, well. He, yeah, yeah. He'd, he'd always perform. It's just, I think with Maresca because of the way they want to play on the ball and off the ball it's like they want to win it back in high areas yeah. I really don't think that profile wouldn't be needed and then perhaps if they're struggling then they'll be like okay let's go back to basics who knows like yeah. if they start losing in September yeah. or in October yeah I like I like. I, 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 just, I just think with the amount of depth we have in the defensive roles at right back at left back and centre back I think it makes more sense for him to go championship the, the, yeah. this season and then do a Premier League loan that and then basically do what Lever Colwell did and Could go be. Championship then Premier League loan and then you'll be perfect for the for the starting team but I also think you could also gut your squad a little bit like you could lose we, we're playing you could like, lose both we're playing like 80 games a season I don't think we want to gut our squad right you now. could get rid of both of Tadebo not Tadebo both of Badi Shile and De Sassi or, or one of them at least especially if you're going to if you want to bring there's in like no a, need to, like though. a Quartas or something like that but if they can bring, uh, but, yeah. uh, but if if Fafana's fully fit, Chalaba's fit, Dasasi, Colwell, Palacio, that's that's we don't need to many. change that. That that lineup just there for the two centre back positions. There's a blend of everything. Yeah, that's yeah. A ver- if they can find there's their depth groove, there as well. Yeah, yeah. If they yeah. can all hit eight yeah. out of ten every time they play. Yeah. And also, it means and we have enough centre backs. We can play a different partnership in the FA Even Cup and the three League sometimes. Cup. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Which I th- I try think. I wouldn't be surprised if Mareska tries at some point. I would not be shocked. Yeah, because if he does um, that. yeah, because if, if you look at their team, Gusto at right wing back, Reece James, James at right centre back, right centre back. I've said this before. Colwell and then central centre back could be Fofana or it could be Chalaba. It could be someone there. Yeah. yeah. Left wing back could be Kukurela or Cucurella. even uh, Chilwell if he's fit back at left wing yeah. back. I would yeah, definitely go more towards Kukurela, and then that leads you maybe a box in the middle and then a, a strike as well. Yeah. So it, Jackson up top with Palmer and Kunku behind. Oh. Yeah. And then Enzo, Enzo and Kaiser. Yeah, 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 it's a proper team already. Yeah. 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 So uh, we, we'll quickly cover fullbacks and move fullbacks to the midfield. Um, so there's an obvious right back, isn't there? I mean, I'll quickly, just for me, one, he, he t- tends to like one defensive, one aggressive. So I thought uh, aggressive, Reese James on the right, or Gusto, both quite aggressive fullbacks. Yes, Left back, Kukurea, a bit more defensive. More defensive actions than any other fullback in the squad. So, really? Yeah. Wow. So he cooked at the end of the season. He, yeah. he, he cooked up, at the end of the season. Because he was great for Brighton, then Chelsea bought him, didn't use him properly, yeah. and then I went, think he just oh, needed to shit. find his form. It's the Barcelona Academy effect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think exactly. he, I think he just needed to find his form again, and I think it was agreed. a lot of just figuring out mental, and then yeah. it's just clicked. Yeah, agreed. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes I, I, that just happens. I mean, I, I remember that clip 
when Mudrik's always there and he's always passing back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, oh. <laughs> and, that, and now he's changed. But, but, but that stigma of him always passing backwards, when he's coming to the middle and he's there just to keep the ball, hmm. of course. Like, if you look yeah. at Man City, he's, they're one of them. I remember there was a stat in one season, they passed the ball backwards the most in the whole league. Man yeah. City, there was a stat something like that. And that yeah. shows you, like, if you want to keep the ball as a team, you always have a free player at the back, so that's exactly. why you always. If you want to retain, if you want to get possession, well, let's say with England, just saw the saw yesterday, like we had like seventy percent possession, yeah. but we were it was just always going around the back. Yeah. It's, it's great doing that if you can then create chances, good quality chances when you can. Exactly. Purposeful possession. Exactly. <laughs> All right, and yeah. into your of you, well, yeah, your fullbacks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the, I agree. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Reece think, James, Cucurella. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So your turn on midfield as well. So after you, man. So midfield, I think Lavia should definitely get a look. I would go Lavia and Caicedo. As the double mm-hmm. pivot, I think both of them, you know, moving together. One of them drops further away from the ball, then comes in. I think they create a very good partnership. Hundred okay. percent. Yeah. Yeah. And then I so sorry, and then I would say, Cucurella would come more towards Caicedo, who would sit, and Lavia slightly ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's yeah. what I would okay. Go towards. It's fine because Cucurella can score from the halfway line now, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then your if you, third if midfielder. You do your ten or your yeah. You do, you're doing an attack midfielder. Yeah, right? definitely, obviously. Yeah, the man himself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair. All right, how are you? Um, so yes, my yeah, you went weird with this. So my 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 ten would be some. It could be Palmer. It could pay, be the man I've been my aggressive midfielder <laughs> I, I put it in quote marks to be fair like, yeah, my yeah, advanced yeah. eight would could he, could be Palmer it could be the guy I've, I've put in and they could switch potentially okay. in game um, so I went with the 4-3-3 three, three. he tended to like like I said he bought Harry Winks so he tended to like one person who would sit and distribute um, and somebody who's just comfortable on the ball lots of passes lots of volume um, can drop if need be but let's say would still play on the front foot and like to play long balls potentially mm. so the and person, just, just on that point something that we then discussed I think we basically said it at the start as well. Is if you look at Leicester centre backs, there's a reason why he needed a ball playing yes. defensive midfielder. Yes, so potentially because this they, might they, not they those centre backs couldn't play out the back, whereas with the Chelsea mm. team you have that. You have got so that you option. can actually have more of a and with Kukurea as well is a lot more comfortable on the ball yeah. as well. So you saying you could really go for it? Sort yeah, of yeah. So this so he might change this. Okay. But I still think this guy is quite aggressive to be putting deep, and then obviously in, I in think transition, he, probably, I think he plays better deep. Who you're about to say? Yeah, so I go with Enzo Fernandez. Okay. Uh, Fernandez? Enzo Fernandez. Fernandez. I, I always get his okay. name wrong. But um, I'd sit him deep, and then obviously he'd distribute from deep. Okay. And then as the team moves forward, he becomes that kind of guy who sits at the edge of the box and uh, balls over the top, firing out to, to Gusto or James at the right wing, stuff like that. Um, by doing this, he pushed Ndidi into the kind of box to box role. Um, so up and down, lots of tackles, lots of defensive actions from midfield. Um, who else but um, Gallagher? Okay. Played in the 10 last season, but again, was the most aggressive of your midfielders. Lots of tackles, but most amount of tackles in the team for midfielders. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he was your best player last season, or close to it. Probably um, not better than Palmer, but... Well, I say Palmer, yeah, yeah. I forgot about Palmer. <laughs> um, so have him in there, can do the dirty work, can also get forward, and he's comfortable in the attacking third of the pitch as well. I like him. And then my third midfielder... I quite like the idea of this man just with his skill making those runs from deep, getting into the box late. Like, I don't know if you play football manager. Yeah, I, have, but but like, I always get sacked. But <laughs> always. Same, same, they're all about it. Um, but that centre mid and attack role. So, like, when you're attacking, it's that late run into the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Nkunku could do that role very well. Yeah. Mm. And a, bit, a bit like Lampard. A little bit like Lampard, yes. Yeah. So it's like kind of going from a centre, kind of like a false nine centre forward to, to attack a midfielder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And potentially him and Palmer, when I talk about him in a minute, could swap. I so see. Palmer drops into that kind of right-sided uh, central midfield, and then Nkunku goes up front yeah. potentially. But I think I think the Palmer in that position makes more sense personally. So potentially. So, so, so you've gone with Enzo, Kai, uh, sorry Enzo, Enzo and Gallagher, Kukurella sitting, Gallagher ahead, and then Gallagher would kind of bomb on, and then when you're defending, Kukurella would move back into left back, yeah. and then Gallagher would cover that space, and um, then Nkunku has that outlet. So yeah, so he's basic. Okay. Yeah, he'd he'd be when you when you're transitioning. He would just run. He'd just go forward. He'd become part of the attacking four, okay. making those runs in behind Palmer potentially. So Palmer drags, sits on the shoulder, drags some defender in. He makes that run in behind. So where's Palmer playing? We'll talk about it in a second. Okay. But it, he's he's gonna be, he's gonna be one of the three forwards. We'll we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. But um, okay, yeah. that is interesting. Okay. So no Caicedo, which you mm, didn't I like. Completely no, disagreed. Okay. Okay. Which Lavia, uh, no, no Lavia or Caicedo, I completely disagree. Lavia, I did look at Lavia. He was in a great um, in terms of that 
that deeper role, that, that passing role. His pass volume was very good. Pass was really good. Limited minutes, and obviously he hasn't played since Southampton. And they last he did he played and, thirty minutes. Did he? <laughs> played oh, thirty minutes and got injured again. <laughs> yeah, do we count that? But like, yeah. <laughs> the last just, time he played these regularly. These players, what's the, oh, their bodies and yeah. Anyway, yeah. Too much volume, but uh, he could definitely do that job that um, I'm saying Fernandez could do. It's it was hard to drop Caicedo, but it was to drop him for Gallagher, and I think Gallagher's performances in that role make him more suited I think if you want to go more defensive and you want to close up shop either bring on either role if you want to just change that role to become just like a generic ball winner break up play stop the other team from hitting on the counter attack uh, stop transition um, I think he's a great asset to have in reserve I think you do drop Gallagher in this I think one thing to I think it, I think it also depends on the team that you're playing. True, exactly. Yes. I exactly. think yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I think the way exactly. that that can work is you'd have Enzo and Gallagher as those two on the left because I think Enzo is better. I think Caicedo is better holding. For sure. Yes, yeah, no, I think he is. So I think Caicedo will play always in that holding role, role and have maybe have Lavia or Ugachuku as their backups, and then I think it'll be Gallagher and Enzo as that going Out, forwards. Outlet, so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And I have Palmer in the yeah. ten. Yeah. I, I think, think Gallagher's better. a lot more. Because he played in the ten last season, you forget how defensive he is. He, he is wasn't. Very... He wasn't by the end of the season. Yeah, was well, he was he not playing in the ten by the end? Because Enzo was injured, so he was playing in the eight role. Okay, cool. But for the majority of the season, he preferred him in the ten. But he is. I mean, but he played really badly. <laughs> he is. He's a box box midfielder. He is a box box midfielder, but he is. He needs to be able to get the ball with a bit of play in front. Yeah. Mm. Side on sort of, and then he's able to drive. Yeah. In. Which yeah. is what happened yeah. in the last five games of the season when yeah. he was playing in that role. When yeah. Tukare would come in, he'd step forwards. Exactly. I think that's what's going to happen, and I think yeah. him and Enzo depend. I think if Moresco is smart, he'll play. He'll probably play Gallagher against the better side, maybe. Just like a Man City, where you need to win that midfield yeah. Battle, battle. Yeah. But then maybe against like a, a West Ham or an Everton or whatever, you play Enzo because mm. he will have that more time on the ball to pick that pass. Yeah, You'll be you, don't, you don't need that industrious chances. against a team like yeah. team like that. I mean, uh, I mean, the very good thing is right now, like we're trying to find out what works, and that's a good problem to have. Oh Absolutely. yeah, as a Chelsea fan, I'm happy. I can because, say- because, because, like as you said, it depends on the team you're playing. You know, one game Kaiseido, one game Enzo. Oh no, let's try Lavia. Yeah. Let's try Bumbi. It's yeah. like very good to have. Yeah. To have four quality central midfield options. I think Uga Chuku is really underrated. Who? Uga Chuku. Okay. Yes. But I, I see him and Lavia in the same boat because I haven't seen them play. Well, you saw him for half an hour, but um, Uga Chuku I haven't seen more them play. this season. And for a 19 year old, he's very the, comfortable on the ball. You know, when they say aura. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Well, okay. he was always good for Ren. Because yeah. Ren lost Kavinga, didn't they, to Real Madrid? Yeah. And this and is the guy in. who this is the guy who replaced, replaced them. them. Yeah. And he's he's I think he's almost twenty now. Yeah. But when he's when he stood in there, like he's fucking like six foot three, yeah. four. Oh, I love that. Um, yeah, and but like still has that like turn, quick feet, um, yeah. and just powerful and co- cocky to an extent. That's good. But well, like it, it, one of those good cockies, yeah. yeah. Why not? <laughs> I mean, I forgot about Ugo Chukwu. I, pref- I, mm, you're gonna hate me. This. I prefer him to Lavia just because. I can see that, though. But just, just because, yeah. Ugo Chukwu's last season where he played a meaningful minutes was for a team that was pressing for Champions League football with Ren in Ligue 1. Mm. I know it's not as high quality, but he was challenging. He's got that winning mentality, a bit more of a winning mentality. With Lavia, he was in the City Academy, never played for City, and then he was at Southampton and got relegated. So mentally, I don't know how he is, and I haven't seen him play for Chelsea enough to say either way whether or not it's work yeah. going to work or isn't. So it's another good headache. Though. It, I mean, it yeah. could be. I mean, I'm, maybe you like you said with Gilchrist, it could be an idea to to put him either at Southampton in the Premier League or maybe to a top like, like Hull I, I, or, I don't co- think or need Coventry to in the Championship where he can go out and like, have meaningful minutes winning for a team, and then we're also forgetting about Santos and. Um... Santos, you Santos, or or go out and buy somebody a bit more experienced. And Cassidy as well, yes. both young, so very good, very good, high very talented. Yeah, 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 some yeah. of these guys go out and loan. I don't know whether or not because Lavia didn't get the loan last season. Maybe you give him the loan this year. But I think I think I think Chelsea would just keep him in to keep yeah. him fit. Yeah, I think I think yeah. they're just they're more worried about keeping him fit now than making sure he's not an injury prone. Yeah. Um, let's move into the wingers, forwards, or the forwards. Who wants to go first? Do you want to go first? Or should I go first? So, I think it's pretty. Yeah. So I'll go. Yeah. So who have I said? Palmer, Lavia, Kaiseido. So it'll be Madawiki. Yep. Mudrick and then and Kuku Jackson. Hmm. I think it will start on Kunku because Jackson got injured recently. Okay. But I mean, but I, I excluding really like injury, Jackson. excluding injury, like who would you have in like your probably Enkin. if you was if you were planning it. Uh, 
I would say l- let's focus on Jackson. Okay. Personally, just because what I, what I like about him is when he drops in, his his ability on the ball is actually like, I've seen him do step overs around like tired. Ty- Ty- yeah. Just yeah. the final product, and I think if you give a striker a second season, hmm. I think they grow into. Cool. It. Well, if you look to his, um, I think his. You sent you sent this into the, this is what sparked this entire conversation. No, by no, the no, way, you're right, right, yeah. because you sent. I mean, let in me this. finish my thing. Oh, also, okay. there was so you, you looked at his shots. I think it was like shots on target percentage right. ratio. Yeah. At the halfway point was like forty two. Okay. That was very good. Mm. And then by the end of the season, it was eighty oh, wow. f- something. Yeah. So like he really has turned it around, and also like he started scoring goals. Yeah. Exactly. He started scoring a lot of goals. Yeah. This. Um, this is what I mean. So he yes. Do you want to show who that who who sent this in? I think it was you. Me, it was me. Yeah, it was you. So he sent this into the chat, and this is what sparked this entire conversation. Shot conversion rate. So he is higher than Alvarez, Osman, and Vlahovic in terms of the season. shot conversion rate. And if you think about how many he missed, so so so, so, so exactly, and the fact that Nkuku hasn't really played mm. this season, it's like earn your place. Yeah. Now mm. we know what how much he can offer, right? Yeah. I mean. He didn't he didn't he play like hardly any minutes compared to Anthony and or like half Still the United time. Yeah, absolutely yeah. scored. But, but, scored but, them. Yeah. but we don't talk about Anthony. I I, I well, you say there about his ability to turn a player and but he's got an issue with finishing. He strikes me as a winger. He strikes Jackson. me as strikes me as a wide player. He plays, so, he's played left wing this season. And did all right. He's left wing seems a lot more comfortable for me because then you can get him to beat a man. And then you've got a forward in there who's a bit of a more comfortable finisher. It's and what can, I th- and then he can drop in and then. That's what I think. Him. I think he, that's interesting. You drop mm. Mudrick until he finds, unless he finds form. Unless he finds well, form, you drop Mudrick, put Jackson left wing, play and can go up top. Oh, I've, I've actually never thought of because perhaps when I have watched Chelsea, it's, it's in the big games: Chelsea, mm. United, Chelsea City. Yeah. So that is interesting because when he when he's one on one with a player, he tends to turn them inside he's out. So powerful yeah. as well. Yeah. Once he gets into a stride, yeah, he is very physical. Like he's fast. To, yeah, I see why Chelsea fans like him because he is in terms of a physicality mm. similar to Drogba in that. But, and and the the, the reason why a lot of us Chelsea fans back him is you only see you guys who don't watch Chelsea week in week out only see the the miss at the end, like. Uh, we, we don't see how much he offers in the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, like, yeah. When it's Chelsea versus Burnley, for yeah, example, yeah, I see yeah, what you mean. And when you just see him like literally just go past three players like f- four or five times in the yeah. game, and you're like, it's, hell. it's weird yeah. you say that because the one thing I remember about uh, Jackson this season is when you played Tottenham and they had what was it two guys sent it off was and a guy really injured bad. and he scored a hat trick and celebrated like he'd won the World Cup and I was like, mm. he's probably just quite happy. Mm. Also, I don't Spurs. know how I feel about that. <laughs> it's scoring a, scoring a hat trick against a, a guy with nine men. And it's Spurs anyway. So, like, <laughs> how impressive actually is that? Okay. And like, if you look at, like, at the one point I made about that post that you put, it's like 0.35 goals a game, XG is 0.45. Massively underscoring. So, he's missing some sitters. Or goalkeepers are just massively overperforming. It's just... But, but the fact that he's getting in those positions... This is the big thing. That's yeah. that's the main thing. If you, if you have a striker that's just a bit flat in terms of yeah. not the right movement, that's when you're like, okay, how do I coach that in... In the prem- at the Premier League mm, level, yeah. But when you see that ability, you're like, okay, maybe left wing coming inside, going outside. Mm. So yeah, th- it, f- okay. Having said that, then I'll go Jackson and Cuckoo and um and, and Madueke. Madueke on the right. Okay. I like I like Madueke. Um, in terms of what I read about his t- his, t- his tactics, um, he likes fast, uh, wide players who can cross and can dr- and can cut in, but yeah, the guys who can hit the byline and has got yeah. pace. That yeah. was the main thing. Which no one started doing. So I looked at progressive runs because I thought that's the closest I'm going to get to be able to measure pace, yeah. if you know what I mean. So in terms of um, progressive runs, Madueke is the best in terms of a right winger. Um, obviously can use his left and right foot, cuts in, seems very strong on the ball. Mm-hmm. Been had a good season. I think he's yeah. been one of your better forwards. And then on the left wing, um, I went with Mudrick because again, he was one of the, to- he was one of the top two for progressive runs. Um, and obviously we know he's fucking got pace yeah, exactly. if we don't look at stats like we look at him he, he's got pace um, and I think if you use him in this role where Mariska wants somebody who does exactly what he does he'll end up looking a lot better because he's achieving what he's being asked to achieve that leaves a spot up front false nine a false I, I think you should <laughs> use Palmer on the shoulder and then you obviously have Mudrick and him swapping because then the, you keep your opponents guessing just, you mean that in yeah, yeah, sorry, in, yeah. Well, Cuckoo in the, in the 10 and then Palmer up front, but then they swap. And you don't know who's going to be making that run, who's going to... Who's just going to drop in, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I think because Maresca didn't really... He used Vardy a lot there last season, and if it wasn't him, it was Dakar. And they're not physical strikers, they're guys with pace. Um, Palmer's not 
lightning quick, but he is fast. And Nkunku is very skillful and can use his pace very well, I feel like. Um, so if you're not going to use a target man, then that space can be used by somebody who can be used to build a strong midfield by dropping deep and creating an overload. But also somebody who's going to run on the, on the turn and get on the so half shot. kind of want to almost like a is that what you're saying? No, oh, it's one bit quicker than Harry Kane because the other it's thing. It's obviously that... quicker, but I'm saying that that's that's you know the, the typical Harry Kane is drop in, yeah. then go. Over. And that's the thing. Well, why are the media giving so much stick to Harry Kane? Oh when, yeah. When yeah. he's just doing his normal job, it's because there's no one making runs in behind. And yeah. shock against the Slovenia game when we started having players running behind. Palmer <laughs> and Gordon. <laughs> Second half, finally. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. like I don't get why. Not going off track that much, but like Kane dropping in, yeah, that's his game. Exactly. Why are we saying, oh, why is Kane getting the ball from CDM? Because he's always done that. Mm. And yeah. when he's got it, he's hit the diag into Sterling, Rashford into someone, then yeah. he's hit the box and scored. Exactly. But yeah, yeah. It's just, but it's, uh, on that note, though, I think because we want to do another podcast just after this, yeah. on the and we can talk stuff. about more about England on that yeah. one. Okay. Shall we'll, I, we'll put a pin in the England stuff. I'll put my last point in the Chelsea stuff, point. and then I'm, and I'm done with that. Is the other thing that he likes to do is, um, either winks or. Jewsbury Hall because Jewsbury Hall's playing that I yeah. forgot to say Jewsbury Hall's playing that kind of um, Nkunku role where he makes those runs to the box and he was their top goal scorer so oh. having Nkunku there runs as, into the box as, as a finisher yeah. exactly uh, or Palmer obviously your top goal scorer last season um, but he did like, what he liked to do is have one of those two guys uh, with the long ball over the top and then obviously Vardy got, got on the end of that and I can see Palmer being your most elite finisher being getting himself into those situations because he's got the ability to do so yeah. but being the most likely to score in those situations because obviously Jackson has got a iffy score rate um and I just think I'd rather have Palmer in those roles in the, in those in those areas of the pitch where he I'm much more confident that he's going to tuck it away than okay. Jackson is interesting but uh, uh, it's very interesting and and that's the thing w- w- with how social media is going if you if you post that I'm pretty sure you'll get a lot of sticks saying oh What's going on? But that's the <laughs> yeah, thing. exactly. That's the, that's the problem with us. We we're not open minded. Mm, exactly. If you propose this to Maresca himself or to mm. s- someone Spanish or German, yeah. If 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 in in the sort of social media world of England, yeah. If there's a bit of you know hate about it, there mm. wouldn't be hate when you propose it to someone European, someone with that modern mentality mm. of, yeah. of how football. If you probably played. offered that to Pep Guardiola, he'd figure out a way to make it work. And yeah. and, and he'd actually consider it be like, okay, so. You, I see what you're thinking. You're trying to do this, that. Okay, yeah. intri- like, I mean, and, and by no point, open-mindedness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, but by no, by no means am I a, a tactician. Like I say, I'm, a, I'm an analyst. That's what I am. I'm a data analyst, technically. Um, so he needs what he needs is someone like you doing the tactics, and he'll find the people for you. Exactly. So <laughs> I'm formula. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You give me a formula, and I'll find you players, man. Um, but like <laughs> you were saying about showing that to somebody foreign, <laughs> I put it in the chat. <laughs> I put it. I put it in the chat, and then. Um, Everyone was a thumbs down, and so was uh, Carlos. I read it in Spanish. Dan, like, Dan's nah, from nah, Singapore nah, nah, nah. was like, nah. 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 <laughs> but he's, to be fair, Dan and me came from the yes. perspective that you need to, something that we keep on trying to teach you, because of the way yeah. that you, your brain works with football, is you're very analytical with it, you're very numbers based. Yeah. And obviously, you need to get that balance of mm. what you see on the pitch, what's best for the team, and yeah. And the numbers. Uh, being, uh, I mean, being an analyst, I see a lot of of, of, um, of stuff like that, and I see a lot of people who don't like the use of numbers and stuff. And, and anal- analysts, I find that we are pivotal to a success of a team, but not solely responsible because yeah. you have to have. You have to in in terms of, pieces. I work in. I, I like to work. The idea of working in recruitment, so um, you have us to provide the data on a player, and then you have scouts to provide the reports and then personality. Um, how they might work with the team, tactical stuff like that, and together you, you paint yeah. an incredibly clear picture. Without one or the other, I think it's it gets a bit vague. Uh, I think what a scout does is potentially just watch a player. Can he take it on the half turn? Can yeah. he do this? Can he do that? I, I really don't think they'll they'll have a stat to say okay, out of five potential half turns, yeah, because you can't really quantify it mm. or, or turning away from pressure. Mm. What does that mean? So, someone's interpretation could be a player's very close to you. Mm. Someone could say. A bit further away where you still can turn it so, yeah. so it's those things as you mentioned it's about the eye test it's about how they look yeah exactly how they affect the team how mm. they contribute to the team and then you, you have the stats yeah how many forward passes exactly okay 100 percent pa- as fabregas said the other day 100 percent pass accuracy but they're backwards yeah okay how it, helpful it, is it, that? it makes such it's yeah. all about context yeah. it's, it's providing information and that adds to 
how they're able to to do things because by knowing these extra facts you can then go okay you did that amazing half turn there but you did it once and you attempted it 10 times and failed it so what are you doing wrong in those other yeah, times exactly. and you can help to pinpoint it by knowing that. coach that as well exactly. exactly so i by no means do i say to people or or think that data is the only thing you should be looking at because that's so wrong you need to be painting as clear a picture as possible and looking at as many angles as possible exactly yeah. within context yeah within context yeah, yeah. Right, well on that note thank you very much <laughs> Raffles, for coming on thank you, I appreciate uh, it. do you want to yeah. just shout out your, your your content and all that yeah yeah so coach raf has on instagram on youtube the honest football coach on tiktok the honest football coach as well mm. on instagram it was the honest football coach but <laughs> got suspended it is what it is but yeah you can find me online for sure. <laughs> yeah we'll put a link down below as yeah. well for you i mean well hopefully by the time this goes up the account's back and you've got it all back hopefully imagine, imagine. fingers imagine. crossed but every day i log in it says we're waiting for the appeal and stuff i'm like okay it is what it is ha hang on a minute yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> can't say more than that well definitely check out raffers um if you enjoyed the video do please leave a like uh subscribe if you're new around here and we'll see you in the next one cheers, cheers. thank you <laughs>